Well, let's switch gears here. Our brand new News Nation Decision Desk HQ poll finds more than half of Americans see rising prices as the biggest problem facing our country. 62% saying they're, quote, very concerned about inflation. Roughly the same number, 63% say the country overall is on the wrong track. Let's bring in Chris Hahn, former senior aide to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Rena Shah, Republican strategist. Thank you both, as always, for being on with us. Um, so despite all the global crises that we're watching play out overseas, Israel, Ukraine, our own crisis here at the southern border, will it still come down to the economy in the 2024 election? That's the big question. Chris, I'll start with you. Well, the economy is always an issue for voters, unless it's not, right? I mean, 2022... We had similar concerns about the economy that we have now, and yet Democrats wound up winning seats in the House of Representatives that they thought they would lose and holding on to the Senate, which they also thought they would lose. So uh, while I do imagine the economy will be a central theme in the 2024 election, the fact that it continues to improve here at home, and even though people are concerned about the economy, they seem to still be spending money at record paces. I think it might be less of a concern considering so much going on in the world. And again, we've got 12 months before people vote for president. Uh, a lot's going to change between now and then. Yeah. Reno, what say you, especially to, you know, when Chris just said it'll, it'll be less of a concern considering all that's going on in the world. Foreign policy isn't always top of mind for American voters. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, considering that there are wars in other parts of the world that we are involved in, just bluntly speaking, we are sending not just millions of dollars, but billions of dollars around the world. And I think that ties right into how Americans feel about the economy. When we talk about the economy, it's this feeling of, is it going well? And if it's not going well, who we blame? The American president. And we wrongly do that because we know in the modern era that's just something we've seen happen, though there's not a direct link between a president and the economy. Now, of course, there are many actions that those in his administration take and those around the administration, he has a hand. But I think when we pull back and look at what's going to happen in these next 12 months, we should expect the economy will be dominant as, as we roll into election 2024. And as the campaign trail hits up, people are not yeah. only going to question how much money money is going abroad, but they're going to question how inflation feels to them and continues to feel to their household in particular. Yeah, and it's hard to deny these numbers, too. I mean, this exclusive poll also found that 44 percent of Americans say they're worse off financially than they were a year ago. That's double the amount of people who say they're better off. That's only 22 percent. So, you know, let's fast forward here. One year from now, we'll, we'll be heading to the polls, voting for president. Chris, how can both parties try to win over that voter who says, you know what, I am worse off than I was a year ago? What's the tactic here? Well, it's always the advantage to the party out of power to uh, try to find ways to appeal to people who are dissatisfied with the current situation. So I expect that the Republicans, as they have been doing since Joe Biden has been president, will be blaming him for all the woes people feel in their lives. The problem for Republicans is they haven't really done anything to correct it. They don't really have a plan for the average American other than continuing to cut taxes for the very wealthy in this country. And I think the American people are fed up with that. Uh, they also are going to have to deal with a variety of other issues that, uh, that, that Americans find very unpopular, like Republicans' view on choice, uh, which most Americans find extreme. And they also have to contend with the fact that their leading presidential candidate tried to overthrow the government of the United States of America and is facing 92 indictments. That becomes a weight around their necks as soon as Donald Trump is being attacked by Democrats regularly, which right now he is not. Uh, if you look at polls around the country, while uh, Joe Biden and, and Trump seem tied, but if you look in states like New Hampshire and Iowa, where there are actually elections, you're seeing Trump's numbers decrease. And I think that spells trouble for Republicans once the campaign really heats up. Yeah. Uh, Rena, I can, I can see you already responding without <laughs> words even being said yet. Uh, I'll give you the last word. Well, Chris brings up a number of good points here, but let's not forget there are still other candidates in this race. Yes, former VP Pence just pulled out this past week, but going into the debate in Miami next week, um, next month, excuse me, we're going to see that these candidates will hammer Bidenomics. From a political messaging standpoint, I think that was the most um, 
a silly move that this administration could have made. Why do you want to call it Bidenomics? Look, the stock market either has to rally at the end of this year because it needs to in the last quarter for people to roll into next year feeling like the economy is in a good place. If it doesn't, that's a ding at Biden. Also, Jerome Powell, let's not forget, he's indicated he's not opposed to raising rates again. If he does that, that's going to be another ding at Biden. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.